What's happening guys? Welcome back to the channel. Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve. I wish this was a happy video. I'm sitting here, got some whiskey, gonna take a shot, and I'm gonna take a shot for the mixed martial arts legend, Stefan Bonner. Stefan Bonner passed away at the young age of 45 years old. Definitely threw me for a loop today when I saw that, and I read it was due to heart complications. So I have some thoughts on the man's career, on his passing, on his legacy, and the impact he had on me as a fan of the sport. So first, uh, let me take my drink. All right. Crack this baby right here. Hope you guys can hear that. Half the amount there. Let someone down for the legend. Godspeed, Stefan Bonner. All right. Ooh. All right, let's dive into uh, Stefan Bonner's career. Stefan Bonner ended his mixed martial arts career with a record of 15 wins and nine losses, three wins by way of KOTKO, seven wins via submission, five decision wins. He was stopped three times via KOTKO, and he lost six decisions. So let's go over some of the names he's fought. Let me see, Brian Ebersole, Terry Martin, Leota Machida, Forrest Griffin, of course, James Irwin, Keith Jardine, Rashad Evans, competed against John Jones, Mark Coleman, Christoph Szczynski, Kyle Kingsbury, Anderson Silva, and Tito Ortiz. Now, whether he won or lost against those guys, that's a pretty impressive resume. He definitely fought some names, even some former world champs. So some of Stefan's background, Stefan was born in Hammond, Indiana. He was raised in Munster, Indiana. He attended Munster High School. Stefan Bonner had an extensive background in combat sports. He started wrestling when he was 10 years old, got into Taekwondo at the age of 12, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu at 22, also trained in boxing and Muay Thai when he was 24 years old. He earned his black belt in Taekwondo at the age of 16. He was a two-time Golden Gloves champ, graduated from Purdue University in 2000, earning a degree in sports medicine. So a little bit more into Bonner's bio and backstory. So Stefan Bonner began training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu with Carlson Gracie during the summer of 1999. He received his purple belt before Carlson's passing. During his tenure as a student of Carlson Gracie, he was given the name Robocop. His mixed martial arts professional debut was in 2001. It's a long time ago. His last fight was against Tito Ortiz in Bellator 131. That was in 2014. So I'm going to put up my personal last interaction with Stefan Bonner. He would respond to comments. He would interact with fans online. The irony of this interaction. So sad, man. So sad. Just 14 weeks ago. So here are my thoughts on... um. Stefan Bonner's legacy, what I thought of him as a fighter and a person from the outside looking in, of course. Let's start with him as a person. Stefan Bonner, to me, seemed like a real dude. It was pretty much what you see is what you get. That's why he was beloved by the fans. People tend to gravitate towards real people. Real as in, you see the good, you see the bad. That was Stefan Bonner. We all saw his dark moments. We saw his highs. I definitely felt bad for Stefan Bonner towards the end in these latter years because he was struggling really bad. And I'm not going to get into his struggles in detail. I don't want to talk ill of him on any level, really, considering he just passed away. But I'll say that, you know, we all stumble in life. We're all honestly capable of spiraling. It happens, man. Sometimes you get caught up with the wrong crowd. Sometimes your inner demons get the better of you. But at least Stefan Bonner went out appearing like he kind of was getting his life back together. I saw him doing gigs. You can see from that interaction and post. That was a picture or video I was commenting on of him doing like a fight gig. And he looked healthy, man. He looked, he looked way better than he has in a bit. And I was proud of the guy. I was happy for him. 
I know he had a family, wife and kids, if I'm not mistaken. You know, you have a responsibility to your family. And it looked like he was getting back on track. He had a podcast he was working on, which I thought was pretty cool. I want to say Forrest was like the first guest. And it's sad that he went out now when it kind of seemed like he was getting it together. But at the same time, at least he went out on a high. Stefan Bonner was obviously a fighter inside and out of the cage. And it looked like he won another battle. Because for a bit there, it looked it looked really bad for him. But man, it um, it's a bummer, man. It's definitely a bummer that um, he looked like he was gonna be all right. Forty five years old. That's that's young, guys. That's young, man. You have a lot more to live. A lot more. Talking about his legacy. Well, Stephen Bonner, along with Forrest Griffin, are very responsible for making the UFC mainstream. I mean, they had a huge part in that. At the time that they had their legendary epic fight, the UFC wasn't doing too well. It was getting kicked off of networks. The mainstream interest wasn't there like that. Then you have this fight between these two warriors at the end of one of the tough finales. I don't know the exact amount of viewers, but it was like it was millions tuning in to watch them fight. And as the story goes, there was this crazy fight on and people were just calling other people like, hey, Turn your TV on. You got to see this fight. And it just exponentially multiplied. Then you had like this crazy viewership during that fight. And that fight got the UFC back on track. Personally, I think Stefan Bonner had a lot of potential. He had really good technical jujitsu. He had a great chin. His striking was formidable. And out of some of the best performances we've seen out of him, I think he had way more in him but possibly distractions things outside of the cage didn't allow him to reach his full potential that's my theory that's what i think anyway when i analyzed and looked at his skill and watched his fights back in the day when he was like closer to his peak now i don't know what heart complications means does stefan bonner get a heart attack was it damaged due to certain substances maybe when he was struggling I'm sure all of that contributed, played a factor. He also tested positive for steroids. That was for like, I believe that Anderson Silva fight. Steroids are never good for your heart. I'm sure there's going to be more details in the upcoming days. And we'll find out exactly what happened. But man, it's a bummer. I like Stefan Bonner. He was a character. Definitely a one of one. A lot of personality. And when he was on, he was a hell of a fighter, man. Tough dude. Sucks that he's not going to be a part of the MMA community going forward. He's just not here anymore. Life's short, guys. You never know when your day's up. Enjoy every day like it's your last. Enjoy that time with family and friends, with your loved ones. Do everything you want to do. Have no regrets. Make amends. Try not to have enemies. And be grateful for the time you have here. Life is a gift. It's not a guarantee. It really is a gift. Rest in peace, Stefan Bonner. I know I'm not going to forget him as a fighter and a personality in the sport. And he definitely made his mark. He's in the UFC Hall of Fame. So you know he's going to at least be immortalized in the mixed martial arts community. That's going to wrap up this video, guys. It was from the heart. Just ranted. You guys let me know what you thought about Stefan Bonner as a fighter. What are some of your favorite moments with him? favorite fights what do you think about his legacy what will stefan be remembered for thanks for watching this segment guys once again rest in peace stefan bonner